Hey, it's Jeff with YourLearningCareer.com. So here's the scenario. You've received an email from your boss basically telling you, here's a PowerPoint. This needs to be turned into e-learning ASAP. No edits, no nothing. Just get it out on the learning management system. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to show you how to do this in Adobe Captivate. Now, the actual importing of PowerPoint into Captivate is actually very quick and easy. It only takes a few seconds. But what I really want to show you are some of the little quirks. Um, Adobe Captivate does have a few little quirks and just some things that you need to be aware of before you import your PowerPoint. So I want to show you some of that. All right, so let's take a look. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at the PowerPoint, kind of see what I'm working with. And here it is. And boy, you can sure tell that this is a SME created PowerPoint. This is the kind of PowerPoint that really hurts my soul. It hurts my heart that I have to put this on the learning management system. But guess what? This is what will happen sometimes. Right now, in this tutorial, I'm not going to worry about how ugly it is, how terrible it is. Right now, my job is, hey, I've got to put this into Captivate. So let's go do that. So I'm going to go into my Captivate. Uh, I will go to New. And I'm going to go to uh, the From PowerPoint, and I'm going to click Create. And then I will select my ugly PowerPoint and open. All right, so you're going to see this screen, and this is where you'll need to make some decisions. You can go in and you can deselect any of the slides, you know, you can, um, so you don't have to bring them all in. You can select all, you can clear all or you can pick individual slides. Then the other items you want to look at are down here. So how do you want to advance the slide? Do you want to do it on mouse click or do you want to do it automatically? I'm going to leave it on mouse click because I'm going to let the person, the uh, learner, control it. Now the next things you're going to look at down here are the high fidelity and the linked. The linked is really kind of handy. Because what that does is it links this PowerPoint within the Captivate to the original PowerPoint file. When you have it linked, any changes I make in the Captivate will actually happen in the original too. So it keeps them in sync, which is kind of nice um, if you do end up making some changes in the Captivate and you want to keep them both the same. So uh, the link can be handy if you don't want them to link, if you want the PowerPoint to just stay separate from what you do in Captivate, that's fine. You can uncheck link. that uh, You don't have to check it, but it can be helpful to have that checked. And then the other thing is this high fidelity, which if there are animations within the PowerPoint that you want to keep, then you want to go ahead and have that high fidelity checked so that those animations will work when it comes over and then you will also get when you click high fidelity you will get a slide duration and if you have any timing built into the powerpoint you can um, keep that by clicking on that but i don't i do not have any timings so i am just going to leave it like this so i've got high fidelity link and i'm going to hit ok now this can take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, here we are in Captivate. So we have all of our slides in there. And as you can see, so I scroll down, I got all my slides. Now, um, you'll notice this uh, on this first slide, see that click box? So the click box has been added to every slide. That happens automatically. So that's one of those little quirky things that I want to go over with you, the click boxes, because they may not behave the way you expect. And so actually what I'm going to do first um, is I'm going to actually preview this project. 
and I'm going to preview HTML5 in browser so you can see what this is doing. All right, so I'll hit play. And there's my animation. Oh boy, that's nice, right? Dripping blood right from the title. Isn't that super? <laughs> Someone had some fun with PowerPoint, I guess. Um, and then you'll see we've got We've got a um, we've got a navigation bar down here, so I can click this to move forward, or I can click the slide. Now, um, notice, see how it's become a hand here. So when I click that, it'll go to the next slide. But now, do you see how it's? I'm going to do this again. Look at how it's not a hand. So I'm clicking. And nothing happens until it becomes a hand. So that's one of those little things. So you may or may not want that. That might be a behavior you want it to do, or it may not. Maybe you want them, uh, people to be able to just click right away on a slide to make it advance. So let's take a look at that and see how we can make adjustments if we would like to. So I'm going to exit out of this and go back into Captivate. All right, so let's take a look at these ClickBox uh, properties. I'm going to double click on the ClickBox and it will bring me the properties. So when I look at the properties of the ClickBox, pause project until user clicks. So that means the slides will not advance until someone clicks on that ClickBox or if they click on that forward in that navigation bar. Um, but anyway, this all is fine. I don't have any problems with this. Um, so let's now look at timing. Timing is what is causing the delay. So if I look here, it says display for a specific time. It's going to display the click box for 0.3 seconds, but it's not appearing the click box does not appear until after 2.7 seconds. So that is why I'm not able to click the slide to advance it for a couple seconds because this is uh, set like this. So if I wanted to make this zero, I can. And now the hand will appear right away and I can click to move forward as soon as the slide comes up. If that's, again, if that's how I want it to behave. Now, if that is how I want this, then I could go in and make the change on every click box, right? I could go in and make everyone zero, but there's an easier way. And let me just show you that real quick. So if I want this to be the same across the board, I could simply go up here to this, apply to all, I'm gonna click it, and I'm going to say apply to all items of this type. So every click box now, doesn't matter where, so look, here's a random click box. It is now on uh, zero. So that's a lot quicker than trying to go into every individual slide. So now they're all zero. Now that could be a problem for this slide. And let me show you what I mean. Because remember that we had our dripping blood here. If, if we wanted to keep the dripping blood. Um, let me just show you real quick. So see how my blood doesn't drip? That's because I have zero now on the click box. They're all appearing right away. So I can click through it. So I would have to go back and adjust that one. If I want the animation to um, come through on this one, I am going to need to make it appear later so that the animation can come through. So maybe I'll do six seconds there and then I'll preview. Ah, there we go. There's my dripping blood. So awesome. That is fantastic. Okay. I might still have to extend it to get my full drips of blood there. Uh, but you know, but you get the idea. All right. So now we've got the timing the way we want it. But that's the, the main thing I, I wanted to show you is that those click boxes do come in and you may have to make some adjustments depending on how you want people to navigate your course. Uh, and I use the word course <laughs> lightly 
for this. This is just an info dump in a PowerPoint. But anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to show you, though, is we saw you saw the player at the bottom, and you may or may not want that. So I did want to show you real quick how you could get rid of that or how you could make adjustments to it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to Project and then Skin Editor, and this is where... I could make changes. So I can change the theme. Um, I might want to get rid of, maybe I like the theme fine, but maybe I want to change some of the colors. I can do that here. I could get rid of some of the buttons. Maybe, you know, I look at this and I say, well, there's no sound, so I don't need a mute. I don't really need a fast forward. You know, you can get rid of whatever you want. Or you can get rid of it all together. So here, this very first thing, show playback control, I can uncheck that and then it's gone all together if, if maybe I just want them to click on the slide to advance. So that's how you could go in and edit the skin. Again, I just went to project and then skin editor and that's how I got to this. So that might be another thing you want to do. And alternatively, you know, if you got rid of that skin, maybe maybe you just use buttons for navigation. So whatever you want to do. But once you get all that figured out, you got your uh, click boxes the way you want them. You've got your uh, skin there or you've taken it away. Maybe you do buttons, whatever you want to do. Then you're pretty much ready to publish. So you would just go to publish and then within publish, you would you would uh, publish it. However, you normally publish for your learning management system. So that's how you put PowerPoint into Adobe Captivate. And then as you saw, there are also usually some little tweaks and things that you have to make. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if there are other types of tutorials you'd like to see here on the channel. And also make sure to hit that like uh, and we'll see you next time.